Hey everyone, here's another video to help just clarify how big you should get into something. You know, I keep trying to do it in different ways. I think this is a really good way to explain it because it's basically mathematical. We're just going to look up the answers we need to answer the question. Okay, so if you step in and you're trying to show up for some keywords, should you get one website, three websites, 10 websites, or do you need to go bigger? Do you need like 25? Do you need 50? Do you need 100? And just to review why you would need more than one, because backlinking is 85% of rank and you've got two ways you could backlink. One is you go out and get links on other websites, other directories and so forth, which is a problem for the reason that even if you're getting the score up for a little while, other people are also coming in and adding their links so it pushes yours down and the link juice is getting split. So you lose the value over time. You have to keep doing it. You have to keep doing it. You have to go back and do it again. Either refresh in the same places if that's related, like being on the front page, or keep going into more directories and stuff and other websites. Now, the other problem with that is um, that it's you and a bunch of other competitors showing up right next to each other, right? Say you're one of these guys on the page to pick from, and you all kind of look the same. You've got a company name. You've got a quick little slogan. Maybe you've got a picture of your smiling face. Who knows? Uh, or a picture of the product or service, but you all kind of look the same. You know, there's 10. How am I supposed to choose? So I'm going to eeny, meeny, meeny, that one, you know, start somewhere. And that's not very cool because it's not directing attention at you. It's not enough clout, okay? So, and third thing, when you're paying for those, that's just it. It's not like they're all free. The ones that are free get the most churn rate because everyone hits the ones that are free. And the ones that are paid are better, but they're paid and they still show many competitors, right? So you might have to pay like 250 a year, or 150, 350 a year uh, for each directory or whatever site you wanna list in that's not got a high churn rate, okay? But even then it's you and a bunch of other competitors. So you're not getting the, the biggest advantage out of it that you would like. But if we create our own websites, we get to do two things at once. Since we're making incredibly related content, we can have all of it point at you directly. Every one of the websites is saying you, 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 not anyone else. You're not sharing the ground with anyone else. It's just you. And then the other side of the equation is they are hot, top quality websites that are related and the link juice does count. You can look it up. Google counts link juice from new websites on the scene as long as the quality is good and the link coming through to you adds some value like somebody clicking the link going to the next website can read more on the topic and that's perfectly fine so yes by creating your own websites you get to achieve something called keyword difficulty keyword difficulty is a secret number so to speak it's from zero to 100 um the higher it is the harder it is to be on the front page for the keyword Okay, we can compete up to about a keyword difficulty of 70. Once you cross that line, it's really, really, you need things like five years of domain age first. Uh, so if you want keywords that are more difficult than a keyword difficulty of 70, uh, you first need to pay for your website for five years and make changes every month on it on your way up. So we like to say, Choose your anchor that you're gonna lock into and push upward and marry that thing, right? Literally, that is your baby because it's got a future that'll last a long time. It'll get you paid well and you're gonna build it up and evolve it over time, right? But what about low-hanging fruit? What about hitting the ground running well and hard? Well, that means finding keywords with lower keyword difficulty, right? That have good traffic that we can create good content for. So let me just, and, and that brings us back to our question. Well, how big do I have to go to win that, the low-hanging fruit? And the answer is, let's start by looking up something you could want to sell. Okay, I remember when a guy, it might have been 15 years ago, it was like, what was it, 2011, 13 years ago, um, told me he made a killing with a, the earliest version of Moji UAP that we ever had, the universal affiliate pages, you know, the dark page with a big image in the middle. And he had a picture on that image of Sealy mattress versus Posturepedic mattress. He had the arrows, right, pointing at both. And his question was, which is better? And then it's like, uh, read the reviews and use this coupon code to get whatever the discount was off of either one. So you could read whichever review, you know, you could choose to buy the mattress. The guy was selling mattresses. 
And mattresses are a big deal. Anyone who's ever slept on an older mattress says, yeah, my back hurts, I don't sleep well. And as soon as you get a new mattress that conforms properly to your body, you like it, uh, you sleep better at night, and it just changes your life, right? Anybody will tell you that that's kind of the idea. So let's just start. And what I do is look up purple mattress, because after all, it's the modern era. And I thought, you know, purple's been a good competitor for a while now. They're not brand new off the shelf. They've had time uh, for people to get used to them. I wonder how this goes. So I thought, what does it take for keyword difficulty? How many websites do we need before we're where we need to be? So I want to start at the bottom. I want to start with, how about a search volume of um, 100 at least per month, okay? And a keyword difficulty, let's go low. Let's say um, zero keyword difficulty. I want to see if I can do it with one website. No backlinks. Okay, I will not win any of the keywords that have traffic. I cannot do it with one website, okay? All right, how many websites do I need to get somewhere? I'm gonna do this with 100 again, or with, a, yeah, 100. And uh, keyword difficulty, let's try to go a little higher. Let's say a keyword difficulty of five means I can use three websites, okay? Basically, for the number of websites you have, or the keyword difficulty, I'm sorry, keyword difficulty of five means 7.5. Take your keyword difficulty, multiply by half over, and that's basically how many websites you need to win that keyword difficulty. In other words, you need more websites than the keyword difficulty by about half over until we get to between 40 and 50. By the time you hit 50, you basically need twice as many. So keyword difficulty of 50, you need 100 websites to achieve that, okay? Anyway, let's keep working our way up the ladder. Uh, let's even lower the search volume by the month, like one a day for the month, because you know we're just curious what's there. And if we do that, what we're doing is trying to say, are there any keywords that you know get that kind of traffic with up to seven or eight websites? Can I win anything? And the answer is no, I cannot. Okay, how much higher do I have to go? If I am gonna go higher, I want more search volume, right? Sooner or later, you're gonna get high enough, but you need to be able to make enough income from it, okay? So let's push our keyword difficulty up. Let's try something like um, 10. That needs like 15 websites. Whoops. All right, uh, let's go low ball again, 20, because we need to see where we hit the ground running at least with something, right? And that's the point. Okay, so let's do 20 again, but bring this thing up. Let's do a keyword difficulty of about uh, 20. Okay, that means we need 30 websites. <laughs> okay, with a keyword of difficulty of 17, there are 55 searches a month for Sleepopolis Purple Mattress Review. Okay, that's something about Sleepopolis. We are not Sleepopolis, so we don't expect that we can compete on that keyword. Somebody's being very specific. So uh, let's try again. Let's go higher. Okay, search volume of 20, keyword difficulty of let's say 30. By the way, if you're saying, well, what about that guy from way back then? Did he have that many websites? I'm not sure how many websites he had, but back then, the, the world was not as competitive. There were not so many competitive players. And so, you know, if you look back 13 years, you could rank for keywords with one website. You can't do that anymore. That's, I mean, the times have changed. A lot more people in play, the game's tighter, you have to play at a higher level, which is exactly what we do, is maximize efficiency at, at high level productions so that we can compete with all the big players out there. Anyway, now we're talking. Got 26 keywords with a total volume of 2,740 per month. Many of these we might not be able to use, many we can, like uh, we could get rid of Sleepopolis, we could get rid of Casper, I'm gonna exclude those. Maybe that's it. So yeah, just by doing that, I'm just trying to really narrow down my list. I can select the keywords I want and stuff, right? So where am I at on this? All right, I mean, we're talking. We just got 24 keywords we need to write about. That's like 24 pages per site times uh, 45 websites. So we write the, a page that includes this term in the page title. The titles will be different, but they'll have the phrase in it, okay? and the H1 tag and the meta description will have that phrase but used in different ways, site by site by site. 24 websites, or I'm sorry, what do we need? 45 websites, so we're gonna do 40, 24 keywords times 45 pages. 
That's how many pages we need to create. 24 times 45. 4 times 45. That's 1,080 pages. At a dime a page times 0.1. Yeah, it's about 180 or $108 worth of writing, okay? The writing that goes on to the pages, all right? Um, anyway, having said that, that is so cool. Because now what can you do? You can start to rank for, you could get at least one website up there on the front page because one website, the way we structure our, our backlinks, we can get as much juice as possible to one website. Like we could have 45, 44 websites point their links at one website that gets to be somewhere on the front page for each of these keywords. Then you say, well, what if I want more websites on the front page for each of these keywords? Very well, you need more websites. Because now you're gonna take your 44 websites to point up at 10, right? Because they can do that. Any website down here can have links to that website, that website, that website, that website. Now what we don't wanna do is make it perfect. We don't want 10 websites, 44 down here, perfectly pointing always at every one because then all 10 have backlinks from exactly the same 44 websites. That's not a good thing to have, that's a footprint. So what do we really need to do? Go bigger. We need to have a bigger spread of websites down here so we can mix and match them through the websites up there. That would mean like getting 75 websites um, or better getting 100. If you really wanna lock and load and make it hard for everyone else to compete, because if you do get 100 websites stacked and you have 10 at the top and 90 at the bottom and you're being serious about this, then we can mix and match the 40, you know, 44 links max per each of these guys is going to put us up up to 10 times for every one of these keywords. We can literally own these keywords. Okay, um, It won't be perfect. There will be some reasons why some of those guys get to squeeze in there. But the reality check is for most of these keywords, we can absolutely take them over by doing a project like that. That maximizes your sales. Say you get like 80% um, saturation. What does that mean? 2,660 searches a month. Let's say that really means 2,000 people doing some different searches before they buy, okay? So if you've got that times 80% saturation equals, you know, that, right? And let's say what, one in five people who read your review decide to buy, okay? So I'm gonna divide by five, okay, just for the heck of it, that's 320 buyers a month, 10 to 11 a day, okay? And let's say that you're cut on the, per, on the purple mattress sale because people just, they won't just buy the mattress necessarily, they might buy the protector, they might buy the cover, they might buy the pillows, you know, their order size goes up some. Now, I don't know how much you would make off the average order size off of this, but let's say you would make, I don't care. What do you want to say, 50? I mean, those mattresses sell for a lot, right? Hello, 300, <laughs> 320 times 50. Yeah, it's like 16,000 a month, okay? How long would it take for all this to kick into play? Between three and six months, you'll be really up there, okay? To like 80% saturation. So, you know, plan on Google letting you grow, but that's because our websites rearrange themselves. They watch how people interact and make changes to improve your ROI. We can monitor how people act through all the websites, uh, and we can download a single report that shows all the best scores from the websites, and we can take the best score combinations, and we can push that data back up through all the websites to force them to improve immediately. So websites, your websites can teach each other how to make themselves better so that you're more competitive for all these things, okay? So even though it's like a 16K investment for 100 websites, by the time you're on a roll, it's a breeze to keep it going for years, okay? Just, you know, as long as you want. You're just, you're shoving the keyword difficulty up on these. Everything that was like 17 or 25 or 27, you suddenly own it all. And it takes a keyword difficulty of 30, 35 for, you know, anything below it got up to at least 35. Some of your websites could be backlinked from like 90 other websites, okay? And in those cases, the keyword difficulty could shoot up to 50, now 45 to 50. So you are making it extremely hard 
for competitors to get back up on the pages once you take them over. I got a guy that's working on a loan right now for 200 website stacks. He wants to use 100 for his affiliates and then he wants to use the other 100 to mix and match the backlinks through those guys because the average keyword difficulty he needs is like 25 in his thing, but he wants to take that thing over, okay? And he can do it. And so if he goes that big and we do that round that well, he's gonna own that thing. He's gonna be the big super affiliate of that company and no one's gonna be able to penetrate. All they can do is join them, right? If you can't beat them, join them. That's very much what's gonna happen with this guy because he's going in so big that no one else will be able to catch up. It'll be so hard for him to do it. Um, okay, can we write about purple mattresses like reviews and stuff? I was just curious even, hey, are you familiar with the purple mattress? <laughs> I asked, and again, um, I'm only doing this with 3.5 right now, 4.0 is better. I just did it real quick. Yes, I am familiar with the Purple Mattress, popular brand of mattresses, known for unique design and novel materials, da 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 da. And it knows all about it. It's talking about it and everything else. Four will talk about it better. And then I asked it, do you know about Purple Mattress 3? It doesn't know, but that's okay. I can teach it, uh, GPT-4, about Purple Mattress 3 so we can write smartly about it. Piece of cake. What about the Purple Mattress Protector? Yes, they offer a mattress protector as part of their sleep product lineup, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, they know all about it. I'm like, write four great engaging reviews from different people about the Purple Mattress Protector, let alone the Purple Mattress. <laughs> Kept my mattress spotless and comfy. Five stars. <laughs> I recently purchased, uh, purchased the Purple Mattress Protector. Man, try to say all these peas so fat, right? A Peter Piper pecked a peck of wood and pe pickled peppers. Gosh, I recently purchased the Purple Mattress Protector and I couldn't be happier with the decision. Saved my mattress from spills and accidents, leaving it spotless and like new. Da, 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 da. Uh, game changer for allergy sufferers. <laughs> Someone with allergies to find a mattress protector that actually works and doesn't compromise and covers. Uh, Worry-free protection and peace of mind. I take the protection of my mattress seriously. Da, da, da. A must-have addition to your sleep experience. Da, 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 da. Now, again, the difference between these and fake reviews. Fake reviews means I am trying to turn those into seemingly real people by going to Google reviews and registering them with Google.com accounts. I, I'd be creating fake accounts using different IP addresses and logging into each one to write the reviews and log back out. And I'm doing that to pretend to be true humans because there's a difference between testimonials and verified testimonials. The functional difference is this. Verified testimonials um, grew out of the concept of testimonials. Testimonials do not have to be real. By law, testimonials have to represent what you would expect to get from the point of view of a buyer. So that a buyer thinking, I wonder what that means for me, can read from a buyer's point of view what they should expect to get. And that's where they say, ah, that's what I was hoping for and that's what they're saying. So now you buy it with that expectation. So the purpose of testimonials on the page is just to restate what you're offering from the point of view of a buyer so that a buyer can see themselves better doing that. That's like when you take a kid to the park and you're trying to teach the kid to leap off the swing. He sees you do it, you're the adult, and it looks pretty darn easy and you're trying to explain to the kid that they can do it. but they're not ready to do it, some of them, until they see other kids do it. Then they're like, oh, now I realize I can do it, right? So when you write from the point of view of the buyer, it's different than the adult explaining, not that they're kids, but they're on the other side of that divide between what you know about the product and what they're hoping you're gonna say, right? So when you start writing from their point of view, they can see that. It just helps make it more defined and clear, okay? So, What's my point? That we can create tons of information. We can create multiple pages describing the items, providing reviews, comparing to other things if we want, uh, putting up testimonials, uh, um, using affiliate links for local stores, you know, whatever it is, get our coupon codes up in there, and then go big and say, that is the anchor I am marrying. 
My job is to sell purple mattresses and compete with the competitor mattresses. And when people go, hey, maybe a Casper mattress is better. It's like, ha, <laughs> no, it's not. You know, I'm going to pitch mine. The other way to go is where you say, some people could use a Casper. Some people could use a purple mattress. Here's the pros and cons of both. You know, here's a coupon code for each, you know, to buy and get a cheap advantage, you know, whatever it is. Right? You can lock in your affiliate sales. You can say, hey, I get paid a, a pay, you know, something if you buy through this link. But you know, um, this link will save you money over going straight to the store. So you want to buy through this link. That's just your way of paying me back for helping you make that decision smartly. You know, So that you buy the right mattress instead of the wrong one. Obviously, we can summarize all that, but I think you get the point. Okay. So the final piece that really makes this so exciting for me right now, when we're talking about things like keyword difficulty and how do you rank, you've got to write out onto all your websites, but then you've got a link from the one website to a similar topic on the next, to a similar topic on the next, to another on the next, tiered backlinking, right? So that some of your websites will get, if you tier it, you go from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, kind of thing, right? Totally valid. We're not doing any reciprocal looping here. There's no looping. There's only one way. Google wants to see that. Now, if you do that, these guys near the top can compete for the highest keyword difficulty, while the next ones down compete for their level of difficulty. And the next ones down can compete up to their level of difficulty. Does that make sense? Except the ones at the top can compete for all. Then the ones here can compete down. The ones here can compete down from their number down. So the more websites you get in a play, the more front page results you can get for those top guys. Now that's with tiered backlinks. That's one concept of interweaving backlinks to form this great anchor chain, really. But the other thing that you can do is take the majority of the websites and point them separately as a separate parallel action, point backlinks from some of those pages up to some of these sites up here to give them extra oomph, okay? So you don't just have to go from here to here to here to here to here to here. You can also take these and have them also mention these, okay? So while these websites are mentioning these, they're also mentioning these. Perfectly valid, nothing the matter with that, okay? So that's two actions that are valuable, right? We just finished that. Uh, so option one, I was showing this off before. We put in the starter domains and the domains we want them to link to and hit go and it looks up what all these, um, the starter domains, it looks up uh, what their keywords are and it looks for matching uh, terms in the page titles or the, uh, the browser titles and it links to those pages. We go nine, like, like uh, from 90 to 10, say, and so we form the links from 90 to 10. I forget which way is which because they took the, the wording off. <laughs> I'll test it and prove it out. It's simple. Uh, but anyway, that is what it does, okay? <laughs> Either it looks up the, uh, the terms and then it matches the keywords or it looks up the keywords and matches the terms and I'll get that right. We're, we're still programming it, but it's done now. And so I just need to see which way it goes. Uh, anyway, but here's the thing. This right here is fastest and easiest to do a bunch of websites to a few real quick, right? We could do a few to a bunch. You know, we can do anything we want, but it's kind of nice to have the combinations. Then I said, but what if I need to do like 10 versions of that? So we created a split. If I split, I put in all the domains I want, like 100. Then I say split into how many tiered groups that I want to split into. And I could say like uh, 10. And when I submit, you know what it does? It goes 10 to 10, and then those 10 to the next 10, those 10 to the next 10, those 10 to the next 10. And it is looking through every page of every website for matching wording to any of the menu links in the next set up. So it's absolutely amazing how far we can go with this stuff now. You know, if I, want to, if I want to do it through tiered backlinks of 20s, I can. Just, it keeps this huge, obvious footprint from happening that looks so natural on the internet. And it's so powerful to be able to add in links here and there. And even stacks of links, and on different days, other stacks of links. So it's offset. Piece of cake, okay? 
and then just come back through you know and have like 90 percent of the links linked to 10. okay just letting you know this is absolutely insane so what do you what do you what do you get to walk away with knowing that we can efficiently do whatever you can cover up to so you go and look up whatever it is it takes for you to be competitive in something you want and you know this is easy no matter what you pick with gpt4 we get to train it okay if i do a new check go to four i get to say here is everything you need to know about the purple mattress four you know now write reviews about it and write testimonials about it i get to do that and it'll go and then i'll get to say now do that a hundred times for the hundred websites that's why we build our tools actually because we already have that remote controlled we don't come here we get this information through the api directly into the websites and so we just work straight from our remote control area and we generate our Excel file with the domains and the concepts, the pages, the topics, whatever it is, the backstories and everything. And then we say, we upload that and say, now go ahead and just create everything. And it straight creates all those incredible websites fast. Then what do we do? We go back, um, we, we go here and we do our keyword linking routines. And already just between those steps, we made an empire for you. Literally, it's a backlinking empire that allows you to saturate Google uh, for that niche that you went after because it was done smartly. We started with what do we need to write about and moved outward from there until we did all the stuff people have to do to make it work. You know, we just capture the keyword difficulty with really cool, interesting, engaging pages. And then the coupon codes and the links, right? piece of cake there you go all right so when you come back here you're armed you're like okay i found that there was enough traffic from you know at keyword 30 uh and i'm willing to go with one site for now you know or two and so i need the 50 you know maybe i could even take like five at the top and intermix the uh 45 at the bottom backlinking up through the top you can you can okay so then you're like okay i can pull this off and if this looks like a lot of money to you i don't understand why this is for a year for 50 websites what is that nine thousand dollars divided by 50 let me just be clear 180 per website 180 <laughs> that's it for the whole year and yet we were doing the math here and talking about the potential for 16,000 a month off of this thing. So even if you paid 16,000 once to lock it down and force the keyword difficulties up so high your competition cannot catch back up with you on your thing. It doesn't have to be purple mattresses. It can be anything that you wanna lock down. What do you know best? What, when you do keyword research and you're looking at the keywords and you're like, I totally get the value of that. And you're like, I know how much I would get paid and I know about what percentage of people will buy this thing who are searching for it, right? What is your thing, right, that you know well? Everybody works somewhere. They have a real strong sense of this stuff with something. So once you know that and you come in, I mean, you've already done the math. That's the point. The reason the stuff is here is so you can do the math before you start the project. So you start it at the right level for you, for whatever it is makes sense for your needs, okay? That way you don't underdo and you don't need to overdo. You can do enough for a phase one. But when someone goes, well, I'm just gonna get one website and see if something hits for, see if some mud sticks against the wall. And if it does, I'll come back for more. Well, that's like having a keyword difficulty of zero, okay? Which means nothing. <laughs> You will get nothing with one website with no keyword difficulty uh, uh, control. Okay, and that's the point. We went up to like, where do we go up to anyway? Before we saw anything, you know? Keyword difficulty at 10, 15, 20, yeah, nothing. <laughs> so even 15 sites isn't enough, right? You need to go bigger if you want anything to stick against the wall. But the bigger you go, the bigger the whole playing field is. So instead of going from zero to one, you're going from like zero to five. 
I mean, literally, you're going in hyperdrive. I explained it to someone this way too. If you have, if, if you pay for one website, one website gets one trickle hit in a month, that, but uh, you paid for a, a hundred websites, say, then that's a hundred trickles in parallel that first month, that means a hundred hits. So you could point all those websites of one goal and you got a hundred hits at the one goal the first month. By the next month, instead of one website getting three hits now, that's a hundred websites averaging three hits now. Maybe some will get none, others will get six, but like three hits on average. That's 300 hits that you're pushing through to the end result. So one website, you get zero. <laughs> 10 websites, you get zero. 15 websites, you get zero. <laughs> 20 websites, you start to get somewhere. Uh, 50 websites, you get far. <laughs> 100 websites, you're in the house. And so that's what we're doing now. All right. I think you get it. So you go to website-installer.com, professional services, and you would pick your package, put in your email, whatever kind of a ClickBank hop link or affiliate URL, whatever it is you got, we'll, we'll look at it ourselves and discover what you need. And then down here. And by the way, you don't need to add your Moment CRM TID or Team ID anymore. Uh, we used to do it that way. Now we're doing it a different way that's better. So you can let that just go. I, I should take it out of the thing. Uh, put in just some short description of what this is so that we see how you see it, you know, and we understand what you want to say about it. And then you make the payment. Guess what? We're going to create that empire for you. Okay. And you can add to it later. Just remember to make it big enough that you don't confuse yourself. I've had a lot of people say, well, it didn't work. It's like, how many backlinks did you have? There are guys who got uh, websites in the past and we didn't do the backlinking because we were not that savvy. So, or we did reciprocal backlinking, just mix and match the backlinks. And with reciprocal, it takes the value back down. And so then they would say, well, I got 25 websites and it didn't do anything. Yeah, well, it will now because of this, right? And that's just a matter of learning as we go. But the fact of the matter is we figured out everything and we are making things happen hard and fast. And this is the kind of tooling that you use to make it happen. So now when you come in here, we're doing it right. And not just that, we can remote control and update. Remote control and update right away. We can take projects that were made in the past. If they were caught up to today's coding standards, it's the only thing. The websites have to be caught up. But then we can do this through the websites at the click of a button literally create layers of tiered backlinks. Some of you guys who got projects just recently, you've been waiting for us to get this finished so we can hit this button and go right through the stack. And we're just about there. We got a couple of other things we have to iron out first. Like I created a domains backup function. So even before going in, uh, we back up uh, the domains before we start anything. That way we just make sure that they are ready in case we, in case any of our brand new tools break something, then we can just restore the backups real quick. You know, I can just go like that and hit restore, huh, and boom, they all go back right away. And so then I can say, hey, we had a problem with this tool, fix it. And then they'll get it fixed, and then we come in and do it again. So, I mean, we're right about there, and it's huge. It's uh, bigger than anyone's put out. So it's GPT writing monitoring everything easily and in the meantime create this diversity for the right keywords for the right keyword difficulty so we can't lose okay hope you find this interesting this is really really cool stuff i think